here with a couple of other folks from Teach Cyber. Um, Jenny Doherty is on the line from Teach Cyber, and Nancy Stevens is part of the Teach Cyber team, and Judy Emmel is part of the Teach Cyber team. So I wanted to let everybody know that we had a lot of requests for this panel discussion. Teachers are interested to learn more about cybersecurity careers so that they can help bring them to life for their students. So you might have noticed that Jenny just hit the record button. So this will be recorded. I already checked with Nathan and Daryl and Roland since they're really the feature tonight and got their permission. So if any of you are uncomfortable with it being recorded, you might want to make sure, right, that your camera is off um, or you maybe put an alias in or something like that. Um, so welcome to the Cybersecurity All-Star Career Panel. Tonight we have Nathan Hack. You heard Nathan and I talking about the fact that we've known each other about 20 years and worked on a cybersecurity project together about 19 years ago. Um, we have Daryl Fife, who I have been fortunate to recently meet, maybe about four or five months ago. And we are starting to collaborate on some ideas and projects together. And Roland Varielli. And I met Roland, I am guessing it to be about six years ago. Um, Roland says, yeah, that'll do. Probably, yeah, I don't know, they all <laughs> mix together, so. So, so that's the panel. And I have prepared a couple of questions and I'll just go ahead and I'll ask my questions, but we're only gonna do moderated panel for about the first 35 minutes. And then I wanted to give each of you an opportunity to go to a breakout room. We'll do three different breakout rooms, one with Nathan, one with Daryl, and one with Roland. I wanted to give you the opportunity to go to a breakout room and ask one of them your questions. So we'll do that starting about 7.35, 7.40 Eastern time. We'll let that roll for 15 minutes or so. I'll call us all back and we'll wrap up with a few announcements and we try to start and end pretty much on time. So with that, I am gonna jump right in and I'm gonna ask Roland to answer this question first, followed by Daryl and then by Nathan. And if you would just please introduce yourselves and tell the um, audience here tonight what you do in your cybersecurity career today, currently. Okay, I'm Roland Varielli. I work at Argonne National Labs, which is about 15 miles southwest of Chicago, um, and I live in the suburbs out here. Um, I do a lot of different things within cybersecurity. My main focus is on um, vehicle systems and vehicle related infrastructure. So my major projects right now revolve around electric vehicle charging infrastructure and how we can secure that better and scale that out. Um, so there's a current push between the Department of Energy and um, a lot of other agencies to be able to scale this out to make sure that there aren't large cybersecurity problems so that when we multiply everything, there's not a, a bigger problem. Um, I also work on uh, risk and resilience projects. So I work with Department of Homeland Security on uh, going and assessing critical infrastructure in different regions of the United States and preparing like reports and presentations on how we can improve that. Um, then I also work on a project. Well, I don't know if I could talk about that. Um, uh, and then I guess another part or another role that I play is I'm a adjunct teacher at the University of Chicago in the threat and response management program. Um, and that deals with um, graduate students to give them a basic cybersecurity awareness. And I'm an advisor for several students on their capstone projects there. Um, and then I guess thirdly, I'm on a 
NIST NICE, which I think is the National Inst Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, mm -hmm. um, working group for promoting careers in cybersecurity. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can ask me about that later as well. But it has to do with making cybersecurity careers more visible and accessible to people, especially in different communities that may not have information, um, such as like transitioning military or people coming from non-technical backgrounds or communities that may not be exposed to cybersecurity careers very readily, things like that. Thanks, Roland. Daryl, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you currently do in cybersecurity. All right, great. Hey, I'm Daryl Fife. And um, so let's see, um, I'm the founder of Digital Forensic Solutions. Um, and uh, that is a small uh, forensic uh, firm. So I really specialize in digital forensics uh, and incident response. And uh, with this company, I primarily serve civil. So I don't do a lot of criminal investigation. I do some support of law uh, enforcement agencies, but primarily, um, working on intellectual property theft and other uh, forensic analysis and, and investigation. Uh, I'm also uh, a founding board member of the Digital Forensics Research Conference, and that has grown from uh, a fairly modest technical working group that kind of came out of the Air Force Research Lab uh, and has grown now to not only doing an international event in in the US, but we have also added Europe. And in 2020, we added uh, Asia Pacific. Um, more about that later. Um, right now, we're running those events virtually. And um, and then really the goal of DFRWS, which what it, what is what it is, so DFRWS.org is um, to bring together uh, government, industry, uh, it, nonprofit, academia together to really look at the deeper problems in digital forensics uh, and push the state of the art uh, in that field. And then uh, one of my most current uh, projects is the Cyber Sleuth project um, through through my through my company, Digital Forensic Solutions. Initially, um, we got uh, funding to develop software to to do forensic analysis. It didn't really exist. Um, we we developed um, tools for the Department of Justice and. And uh, the then NIST actually file carvers and uh, scalpels and you know did, did several different tools that were really for law enforcement. Um, but a few years back, I guess it's going back maybe almost eight years now. Um, I was became very conscious of the fact that there were very few women in the field of cyber and digital forensics, uh, and I felt keenly about this and applied for funding from the national uh, the you know the national um, science foundation to create education that was really designed to reach young women in high school uh, and and introduce the subject in high school because in my business as a, as a woman owned business, I had found a number of women coming to me who had tried to get in the field, maybe didn't have the greatest success getting in. Uh, and so we have developed curriculum really focused in digital forensics and incident response uh, for high school. And um, I've just finished up a partnership uh, pilot with uh, CCSD. It's exciting to see somebody from Trevi from CCSD here. So that that's kind of what I'm doing right now. There's a few other things we're we're working on cyber training for Department of Energy and a few other things, but that that's those are the basics. 
Thanks, Carol. <laughs> so I'm going to, before I turn it over to Nathan, I'm going to say the clear theme is that you have to have at least three, maybe four balls in the air if you're going to be in cybersecurity. <laughs> Go ahead, Nathan Heck. Let's just say there's a lot of opportunities to, 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 <laughs> to do things within cybersecurity beyond those that necessarily pay you. So <laughs> um, Nathan Heck, I am a director of uh, client security client security solutions uh, for a very large uh, information security firm. I'll, I'll mention the name and then I'll have to give the, the obligatory, uh, you know, these opinions or Nathan's statements are not a reflection of his employer thing. <laughs> uh, it's with Optive Security. So uh, we are a, a pure play security uh, solutions uh, firm. But as I mentioned, the legal group tells me I have to say this when I do this. Is, my opinions, my statements are, are my own. They don't reflect my employer. But uh, what I do is I, I run a, um, a group of uh, former security leaders that were coming from the client side. They've served in all different roles over the years. Uh, some may be technical, some may be more strategic or business oriented, but all within information security. And what we do is we work with the clients, everything from Fortune 25 to state and local education and government clients to help them solve their problems uh, with an approach that is taking in mind the goals of the business, basically. So it's not, it's not security for the sake of security, which is a problem that we've had in our field. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I mean, my, my role in this is basically to help facilitate and grow those individuals as they move from a, a client facing role where they've done a lot of the work to a consulting or, or advisory role. Uh, in helping clients with these kinds of projects. Uh, on the side, uh, you know, outside of the day job, I actually um, serve on uh, my employer's uh, DEI advisory board, so diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so I run our veterans uh, affinity group and I assist with uh, other affinity groups like uh, the Women's Network, uh, Black Employees Network, our LGB LGBTQ uh, group as, as well. So we try to, as groups, uh, work with individuals that kind of, as Roland mentioned, maybe want to get a start in a career that is information security, but they haven't had that exposure. So, so that's, uh, that's one of my side things. Um, the other thing that I do on the side as well is I do some pro bono uh, CISO work for uh, nonprofit uh, organizations, primarily centered around uh, veteran causes. So, thanks, Nathan. So you've met the panel. What I'd like them to talk about next, and I'm going to switch the order. I'm going to ask Daryl to go first, and then Nathan to go second. And we'll circle back around to Roland last. What I would like you to talk about is now that we know where you're currently at in your career, how did you get here? What's your career path been like from start to today in cybersecurity? So, uh, <laughs> when I first started, well, well, first of all, I don't want, I, I won't say exactly how old I am, but uh, when I was going through school and looking at, you know, what I wanted to be when I grew up, um, it, the computers were, were, were really just it, starting to take hold. They were there. Um, all of the computers I had seen had those, you know, glowing green, you know, that tech green screens and, um, and text, they were text-based and I was not interested in computers at all. Um, what I did get interested in, uh, was film and video and television. Uh, I, uh, I, I grew up in a place and I started interning, we had a lot of theater. We were um, and the theater that I was uh, an intern at had a film um, that we, we had a, a, a film festival. And so I started working in film and then um, 
while I was doing that, we actually went from um, editing, literally hard editing, when you, you would splice film together out on the editing table, and then suddenly Silicon Graphics comes along and they've got online editing tools and, you know, the video toaster and, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, in incredible um, trade shows like SIGGRAPH and working on all of these amazing things. And so quite honestly, um, I came from film and media and this really rich, immersive background and, and the computer technology was really just an end to the means. Um, I went on to, to, to ride the dot-com wave in Seattle and worked uh, to launch digital signatures and um, e-commerce sites with the, the Department of Information Services. And that was, that was a big wave. So that was interesting. And um, right around that time, streaming media came along and I was working with Real when there were like three people at Real and you know Microsoft didn't even really have streaming media yet. So um, that was actually how I got into tech because I thought of myself more as an artistic person and um, and so that is that is exactly how I got pulled into tech and what what the reason that or the way that I got in, involved and drawn into um, cybersecurity and was that uh, all of these amazing campaigns and activities that I was doing we started to um, to to be interfered with um, by hackers and technology. Like, so for example, um, you know, he did this amazing ad campaign. I was working for one of the hot agencies, you know, we were doing all this stuff and we did this amazing flash campaign. It was just beautiful, but you know, then somebody uh, compromised flash and all our hard work, you know, went down, down the drain. I mean, back, back, back then, um, you know, it was a little bit playful. I was working, you know, for Microsoft and, and like, you know, the 13 year olds in Indonesia were just tormenting them. So kind of everything I was doing started to be impacted by cyber and cybersecurity. And so that that's how I got involved. It just, I just got mad. It made me mad and it was interesting. And I found out, I just, I don't know. I just got pulled in that way. That's how I got here. It's, it's, it's a bit of a, a winding path, but that's my story. Thanks, Daryl. Nathan. Oh, let's see here. Uh, I'll be the first to admit I'm kind of the jack of all trades individual. So it's a path that goes all different types of ways. Um, I have been in information security related uh, positions for about 25 years now, right over 25 years, I think, uh, in IT related stuff for a little over 30. Uh, started off back in the late 80s, early 90s, honestly, uh, you know, during the, bull, the bulletin board, uh, you know, dial in modem stuff. And I was doing a lot of the what was what was called hacking back then, but was not malicious. Mm -hmm. It was more exploratory. You know, a lot of us that started off that we are kind of mad that that uh, that phrase has been, you know, exploited over the years, but started off that way that got me interested. I mean, I you mentioned, uh, Daryl mentioned the uh, the old monochrome monitors. Uh, my first experience with those was in maybe high school, I think, and I I rewrote the the uh, um, word editor, the word processing program, which was written in BASIC. I I, I took it apart and started rewriting it uh, and 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 changed it to uh, you know to what I wanted. Uh, and after that, I was kind of hooked with plan stuff like that. Um, so I've always, you know, <clears throat> all the way through high school, always, you know, tried to, to mess with that kind of stuff as much as possible. I joined the military right out of high school, um, spent my first, I want to say five or six years of that doing information, sorry, doing um, uh, military police and military police investigation. So I had a background uh, doing uh, basically discovery and detective work, if you will. Uh, so naturally, my interest in computers and that collided when I went to, uh, to college and I ended up at Purdue, uh, which is where I later on met Melissa, but um, put myself through college working for the federal government, uh, doing uh, basic computer security back in the day and network administration, uh, and then later on went to work at Purdue, uh, all the while 
serving still in the reserve for the military in various different roles, but almost always as a, an information security officer. So responsible for information security at a battalion or brigade level. So the overall program as a whole. But all through all those things, as I did different security analyst, administrator, engineer, architect, director kind of roles, I found that I enjoyed something for a while and then I moved to something else. Um, I, I knew Daryl's name because I did a good five to eight years of information of uh, instant response and forensics. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on some of those groups that you've not actively on some of the stuff that Daryl mentioned, but uh, I used to I used to really enjoy doing that. I did that for the local uh, local and state police here. I was a special deputy, so I could help them before the local police had those kinds of capabilities. So, but um, you know, I just found that I enjoyed doing all different types of things and. As I've gotten to this point in my career, uh, I've kind of transitioned more from the technical towards the business and strategic side of things. I like the bigger picture of things uh, and how it aligns to to the business itself or how it should. That's what I. It's a it's a growth that I see going on right now in the industry uh, at the security leadership level. They're starting to realize it's not just about security for the sake of security. It's about doing it. So the business can be successful or the organization can be su successful if it's a nonprofit. So, but that's, that's how I got to where I was. I basically did about 17 years on the client side uh, before I came to the company I'm in now. And, uh, you know, it was really great to have all that experience and then be able to work with such an array of different clients. I mean, every different industry, uh, we have clients that we've worked with, um, getting to learn about their industry, their challenges, their their business drivers and their goals has really, really been cool. So. Thanks so much, Nathan. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Roland. Roland, you know the question. I do. Um, so I also grew up in the BBS monochrome monitor days. Um, <laughs> and cybersecurity wasn't really like, um, I don't know, like a known entity to me at the time. So my friends and I used to mess around a lot on like different PBSs and AOL was very young at the time. Um, and we would uh, like actually reverse engineer malware and send it to each other. So I don't know how many like 10 year olds, you know, that have like diskettes of viruses that they send to their friends, but we had like an ongoing challenge of like trying to compromise each other's computers and stuff. Um, but I ended up going to school for computer science because I was just interested in technology and and that was kind of, um, I, there weren't like cybersecurity majors or anything like that. Um, so I ended up going for computer science and then software engineering. Um, and then I took a job as a high school teacher teaching um, honors computer science and AP computer science. It, uh, in the, I guess last block of the city of Chicago actually, it was a private school. Um, and then from there, I. The president of the school asked me to become a system administrator, which I had little to no experience to do. Um, so I learned uh, pretty much every Microsoft server technology in a year, um, how to harden them, how to outsmart students, which students are pretty good uh, hackers themselves. If they want to play games or if they want to proxy out to get different connections past your firewall, they'll figure out a way to do it. So I learned lots of things very quickly. Um, but then I went to go get my PhD at uh, University of Illinois, Chicago. Um, and there I met um, one of my former coworkers who used to work at Argonne. And he thought I may be a good fit for cybersecurity and we got to talking. Um, and I won the first capture the flag I ever entered. And he was like, yeah, you should probably do this for you know, more than fun. So I started interning at Argonne and um, I ended up sticking around for seven years now or eight years. Um, I guess that's kind of how I got to where I was. Pretty linear path. Thanks, Roland. So for the panel, I'm going to give you one of two questions you can pick. And the order this time will be Nathan, and then Roland, and then Daryl. So the two questions, you could either say what you like most about your career, 
what keeps you coming to work every morning. Or you can talk a little bit to the teachers who are here with us tonight of what you think are the key qualities that make somebody successful in the field of cybersecurity. And so that would be something that they could carry right back to their students. Um, and hopefully everything that we've talked about so far tonight, they can carry back to their students. Like as I was listening to all three of you talk about your careers, I thought so clearly there's, there's progression, there's opportunity for growth and for you to learn new things and to kind of reinvent yourself in the field of cybersecurity. Well, I think that's important to know. I think that's important for teachers to know. And I think it's important for their students to know. So all of your stories demonstrated that. So Nathan, I'll kick it off with you, either what you like most about your career or what you think are the qualities that really make somebody successful in cybersecurity. I think I can answer those both at the same time. And I will, I will <laughs> apologize in advance because the reason I'm smiling and laughing, if you notice when I was muted, is my, my son, three and a half years old, is outside the door like, let me in, when let me in. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> so I will not be surprised if the door swings open when, uh, when I'm talking. So, um, but uh, what I like the most about my cybersecurity career is the fact that it is, there's so many opportunities. There's, whether you're interested in the technical aspects or you're interested in the business aspects or whatever the case may be, there is such a swing of different possibilities that you can get into. And there, you can get into them from so many different uh, avenues, um, which again, kind of also uh, answers a little of your second question. Um, the, you don't have to start in a career in information security. I, I found some of the most uh, knowledgeable and well-rounded individuals have started in other different careers. I have, uh, kind of like Daryl mentioned, she started off in, in, uh, in media. I, I had a, one of my advisors before, his degree was in film studies. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be cybersecurity as, as the start, but I definitely urge people to consider it as something that they work towards, depending on what their uh, long-term goals are. Uh, the cool thing about it, I, I, I still think, is the amount of opportunities. Now, you know, whether it's up or over, however you want to do it, there's, there's, no, there's no shortage, even if you highly specialize or if you stay broad, there's so much stuff evolving on a regular basis that you're never going to get bored. I always like to tell people when I'm interviewing them or people interested in being mentored into the field, this is not the type of field that you do for a certain amount of time and you're an expert. I personally don't like referring to, you know, someone as an expert because there's so much stuff that changes so often that you have to stay on top of it. So that's one of the things that's cool about it. If you're the type of person that's a lifelong learner or um, you just enjoy trying new things, this is one of those opportunities within the field. Um, the other thing that uh, I really like about it, and you can kind of tell from my background, is I like helping people. And that's really at the core of what information security is. You can spin it whatever way you want, whether it's helping a business to be profitable or helping an individual to make sure their information is not compromised. It really is about helping others. And that's something I've enjoyed as well. Thanks, Nathan. No problem. Roland Varielli. And I was just, uh, I was just on a student panel like an hour ago describing this exact same thing. So how... <laughs> How I put it to them was I like one of my favorite things about the field of cybersecurity is that it keeps reinventing itself with the same kind of principles over and over and over again. So things like cloud computing are very similar to mainframe computing concepts from 20 years ago. So it's kind of like a pattern recognition thing where you have core competencies and core sets of knowledge that you can apply in different ways. And it's almost like a puzzle where you need to tease out what sort of approach or what sort of technique you'll do based on your experiential knowledge and you know what you've learned through uh, like theoretical courses, maybe work experience, lots of different things that you can pull from in your life to try to solve this puzzle. And it's not like a, com 
it's not a perfect puzzle or anything like that. There's always leeway. We're not looking at, you know, very clear cut systems. And a lot of the times communication is the biggest problem where even the people documenting the systems may not have perfect knowledge of the systems or things like that. So um, I look at it like a constantly evolving puzzle that you're um, solving many different times. So a lot of the problems I see in like vehicle charging infrastructure, they're not new problems. It's just a new application of how do we secure this with these additional constraints and these other hoops we need to jump through now that never existed before. And then how do I convey that to people in a coherent manner for them to actually act on that? Um, and that sort of interaction I like as well. Um, and I know Nathan talked about that. Thanks, Roland. Daryl. So I think that my answers will suit both questions. So, um, the, you know, the things that I love are that I don't do the same thing twice. However, there is a lot of process, right? So one of the things that I do love is that moment where um, I'm working with a client or somebody at, or, or a kid through the Cyber Sleuth program and the kind of move from being this passive technology to, to feeling a little bit more proactive with the, with the technology. And I feel like this is so important. It's so important because we are all surrounded by technology all the time. And there isn't going to be, you know, an IT person to protect you. Right? <laughs> so, so we really have to train ourselves and model that in our, God forbid, our, you know, our parents, um, because they actually have assets. I mean, the kids have like game, you know, the, you know, game <laughs> characters, right? Your parents have, you know, the, the light, their lifetime savings. Okay. It's so incredibly important that we get to the point uh, as individuals uh, and citizens that we understand this because, um, <laughs> <laughs> we we can we cannot we cannot you know, underestimate that. I don't I don't I probably don't have to preach too much about that. But it's that moment when, like for example, I went I, I had a, a a case. It was a big law firm, and the the woman who had been there for many years, and she was just like the the grandmother of the firm, um, had been compromised, and. She is now their lead cybersecurity enthusiast. And that is why I keep showing up, right? <laughs> because she, she actually leaned in and got it and, and is now actually uh, a cybersecurity evangelist. And I've, I'm like, win. Like that, that is a win for me. That's amazing um, when you know, one of the students goes through the program and they say, oh, now I know what I want to do. Like that gets me out of bed in the morning. <laughs> and that's what gets me up. Um, and um, yeah, just it, it, so, so the qualities that I look for when I'm hiring are people who are curious, people mm -hmm. who are going to understand solving problems. Like I am not going to be able to always tell you what to do. I can provide process can tell you what not to do, you know, <laughs> you know? Um, but, you know, again, so the curiosity, interest, um, problem solving, I, I, the, the question that I ask is what kind of problems do you want to solve? And then who do you want to solve them for? Because um, all, and I feel like that about technology just in general. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's, I, I hope that did I answer the question? I, I you think sure did. Yeah, you sure did. You guys have been great. And I want you to know, everybody, we're right on time. So listen to me carefully, because we're going to go to breakout rooms. And I'm going to send Nathan Peck to breakout room number one. And so anybody who has a follow on question for Nathan, you're going to go to breakout room number one as soon as I open the rooms. And Jenny, would you please moderate that room? Yeah. Um, 
happy to. Okay, that'd be great. I am going to send Daryl to break out room number two. And I'm going to ask Nancy Stevens to go to breakout room number two and moderate that room. So anybody who has a follow on question for Daryl, um, one of my follow on questions I'll pop in if I can is what particular challenges you think women face in the field of cybersecurity. Um, so I'll pop in and ask that one. And then I'll send Roland to breakout room number three. Judy, would you be able to go to room number three with Roland and moderate that room? I certainly can. That would be great. Sabrina was going to, but of course she couldn't make it tonight. Um, and I'll keep an eye on the time and I'll pull us all back together about seven, um, I don't know, about eight or nine till, and we'll go to announcements. Any questions before I open the breakout rooms? If you don't have any questions for any of them, Bob, you can just go listen in. Um, if you've got work to do, if your dinner's waiting, you can do that too. <laughs> of course, you're welcome to switch rooms. If you feel free. Any other questions? Okay. Nathan is room one. Daryl is room two, and Roland is room three, and I'm going to open the rooms. I'm happy to uh, put you in a room as well if you want to type in the chat. All right, I better get to my room. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll keep doing what we're doing here too. Okay. And I can put Judy into room three. Anybody else? Sadia, Michael, Cindy. I have a, I have a question. Which uh, the different rooms? I'm sorry, I missed what the conversation is for each room. Just an opportunity. I asked a couple of questions, but I wanted to give you the opportunity to ask the panelists some questions. So um, gotcha. is, okay. is in room one, Daryl is in room two, and Roland's in room three. You can pick whichever one you want to go to and you can switch. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.
Tom Pollard. Yeah, I just want to let you know I have to get going. I have a class I have to teach this evening. So I know you said you had to teach. It was well, thanks for being with us. Yeah, that I, I was in uh, Roland's thing. That dude's interesting. He is really interesting. So, uh, you know, especially that whole car hacking mm -hmm. thing. And it's like, that's cool. So, but yeah, it was good. So I guess I will. Uh, be chatting with you again on Tuesday. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. All right. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.
We had a great discussion. <laughs> Boy, was it controversial? We're so quiet now. <laughs> no, I don't think there's anything controversial. No. <laughs> I did I did offer because I don't know if we are able to get through everyone's question. I'm more than willing to stick around afterwards if anyone wants to finish oh, chatting. Thanks. I just can't stick around too long. Got to get the kiddos to bed, but I can is certainly this, stick around a little after eight. Is he still outside the door? No, mom's got him uh, distracted <laughs> in the other room watching TV at the moment. So I was gonna we're, say leaving probably... for, we're leaving for vacation tomorrow so they can stay up a little later right now. Nice. <laughs> All right. I think we are reconvened and I'm going to turn it over to Jenny. All right. Well, I wanted to um, thank everybody for being here tonight and for the panelists. Um, I learned a lot. It was a great discussion in our breakout and um, really like to hear all the different paths to cybersecurity because certainly my path to cybersecurity has, has not been um, the predictable one. So thank you so much. Um, we just wanted to quickly give a few updates on what we have um, coming up in Teach Cyber. We have a state and local working group. Judy has been spearheading that. If um, your state isn't represented here or you're here and you're from one of these states and would like to learn more, um, do reach out to Judy. Our next meeting is uh, Tuesday, November 30th at five Eastern time. So we are right now talking about um, looking at kind of state level standards and guidelines. And so that kind of interests you or you know somebody that's working more at the state district local level, um, you want to pass on our, this information, we would encourage you to do that. Another upcoming opportunity is the NICE K-12 conference is December 6th and 7th. We are hosting a pre-conference workshop. So um, I think registration's probably closing soon. So you wanna go ahead and register. If you have any questions about that or what we're planning for the workshop, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'll be happy to talk about that. It closes December 3rd. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> um, wanted to share about the National Cybersecurity Teaching Academy. We are a partner um, institution. We're help, helping kind of coordinate this large effort. There are three universities granting a 12-hour graduate level certificate. We think it's one of the first of its kind for uh, high school teachers. So DePaul, University of Arkansas, Little Rock, and University of Louisville will be granting that um, certificate, but they're also partnering with several institutions across the country to help um, develop the curriculum, mentor teachers. I think it's gonna be a really great experience. Uh, so if you're interested in receiving more information, we'll have some information sessions coming up soon. The application will be released soon. So do um, click on that link. I believe Nancy's put in the chat. And let's see, what else do we have? Always a surprise what slides coming up next, even though I put them together. Um, Saturday, December 11th, Nancy will be hosting a free 90 minute virtual workshop. If you have heard about, or this is your first time hearing about the high school cybersecurity curriculum guidelines and you would like to learn more, um, this would be a great workshop to attend. We'll 
talk about uh, the Teach Cyber curriculum. You'll experience a hands-on learning activity. Um, or if you have teachers that are you know, new to cybersecurity education, interested in learning more about Teach Cyber or the guidelines, um, I think this would be a great fit for them. So you can register there at that link and hopefully it's in the chat. In general, we are really looking to build relationships, develop partnerships. So there's a lot of different ways other than those opportunities. You can register for a free account with Teach Cyber. You can download the curriculum for free. Um, you can sign up to be uh, receive news from us in our newsletter. So there's a mailing list. It's at the bottom of our website there for you to sign up. Excuse me, and you can participate in more of these virtual lounges and other opportunities that we dream up um, as we continue to work in this space. Um, so the next lounge is December 16th at 7. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I think the next slide has our team's contact information as well. Um, don't hesitate to reach out if any of these things sparked your interest. Um, and once again, thank you so much to our panelists for um, sharing more about your careers and, and your path to cybersecurity. Thank you so much. Please join me in thanking Roland and Daryl and Nathan for their time and expertise tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thanks. So yeah, thank, thank you for your interest here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.